بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين لله تبارك وتعالى إن شاء الله تعالى we're going to continue in our reading we reached up to page 83 in the biography of Ash-Shaykh Abu Bakr bin Abdullah Al-Aydarus Al-Adani, the great knower of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. And here in his biography, you get to see the unity of the people of Tasawwuf, because as we know, his primary tariqah, spiritual path, was that of the Ba'alawi way. But he also had the spiritual connection to Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani, Sheikh Ahmed Rifai, as Suhrawardi and Abu al-Hassan al-Shadili and others. And the scholars from that way, they said, though we stick the way of our forefathers, we recognize the status and the rank of the other awliya of Allah, and we take from them for the barakah, for the blessing which gives us a very important lesson that you may look highly towards your teacher and even feel that your teacher is the best teacher. But at the same time, you don't belittle others. You don't deny the rank and the status of others. And when I say others, of course, others who are following the straight path, the methodology of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. As for others who contradict the way of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, that which of their sayings or practices or beliefs that are in contradiction to the sacred law, we censor that. And that which is in conformity, we accept that. So another point that I want to share to us, I want to share with us, excuse me. If you want to avoid misguidance from your side, because guidance and misguidance is under the control of Allah Ta'ala. So it's a matter that Allah has eternally willed. From your side, the way you try (coughs) from your side to avoid misguidance (coughs) or being in a misguided group or under the guidance of a misguided teacher is that you make your scale <clears throat> to weigh things the sacred law, which means you have to learn the sacred law. And whatever fits within the dictates of the sacred law, you accept. And whatever is outside of that, you reject. Is this point extremely clear? Weigh people according to the sacred law, which means you have to learn it. But that's your scale. If you are successful in doing that, 
you'll protect yourself from misguidance from your side. That's how they were able to mix because they knew the sacred law. They knew what was valid, what was invalid, what was lawful, what was unlawful, what is recommended, what is disliked, what is merely permissible, what is sunnah, what is innovation. They understood these things very well. Now, go ahead. So we're on the beginning, I mean, the bottom of page 83. Bismillah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. The author, may Allah ta'ala have mercy on him, said, The Sheikh's powers of unveiling were extensive. He spoke to the people he met, Moroccans, Egyptians, Khorasanis, and others, describing where they lived and what happened there in such a manner that they often asked his companions whether the Sheikh had been to these countries and stayed there long enough to be so well acquainted with them, which of course he had not. He was described as a heavily built Remember, we talked about Al Kashf, which is unveiling. And our teachers told us that's the first stage in the path of Wilaya in terms of extraordinary matters occurring. Mm. He was described with a heavily built he was described as a heavily built man of light complexion and white beard, all inspiring, yet always smiling gently, fond of subtle humor and of plying his companions with sweets and fruits. He turned a blind eye to other people's offenses, forgave those who injured him, and was generous to the extreme. His this aspect is one of the most important aspects that the Muslim needs to have. It's extremely important. Avoiding concentration on people's offenses towards you. In our way, people do stuff. Be patient. People do stuff. Don't take everything so personal. Everything's not the end of the world. Even if it may be something that makes you uncomfortable that someone does or says, you have to be patient and forbearing with that. And if you're ever going to do a dawah, you have to be extremely forgiving. Because as I said, People do stuff. And you're, you are among people. You do stuff. And just as you turn to Allah and repent and ask Allah to pardon you and to forgive you, likewise, you have to be like that to others. And not only that, then you have to be extremely kind and generous. I was thinking about yesterday, Sheikh Abdul Razak Al Halabi, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he was the Grand Sheikh of the Umayyad Masjid in Damascus. One of the foremost scholars of our era in the sham areas, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He was a teacher and he told his students that one should be so generous and eager to teach the religious knowledge that if you had to, you would pay someone to learn. One should be so generous with the knowledge that if you had to, you would pay someone to learn. I pay you to let me teach you. 
سبحان الله not just saying people don't want to learn that if it was in your capacity you would hire them to learn and most of the scholars who attracted the hearts of Sheikh Abdul Razak Al Halabi is his name. Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhu was his name. It is through his dua among many that we are, I believe, having the success to do what we're doing. He made a special dua for this work. And I believe from that time he made that dua, to this day, I see the result of it. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Uh, so that's an important aspect. So make sure you embody these three characteristics. Turn a blind, blind eye when people offend you. Don't take it so personal. People do stuff. Be able to overlook. It's very important. Pardon and forgive. And be generous to those same people too. This was the way of the Prophet ﷺ and the way of the awliya. At the end of the day, we want guidance for people. We want people to be guided. And the human being is always in a state of at-taqseer, always falling short. That doesn't mean you accept people's bad behavior, but people's bad behavior are not necessarily the person themselves. themselves. They may have weaknesses. In fact, they do have weaknesses and they have struggles and the struggles are different for each individual. So what is easy for one may be difficult for another. So understand that and be patient with people. And this is the way of emulating the Prophet ﷺ and the pious. So here we're in the ninth century and we see Sheikh Abu Bakr bin Abdullah al aidarus al adani emulating those prophetic characters. So let us emulate them as well in our dealings. Naam, go ahead. His hospitality became legendary and so did his sanctity. Footnote number four, excuse me. In Ramadan, he fed his guests 30 sheep every day. Then on eight days, bought some sumptuous clothes for each of his servants. His uncle, Sheikh Ali, Rahimahullah had once said to him, oh, Sheikh Ali, let's see if we are following. By now, you should be in love so much when you hear the name, it's just like, mashallah, right? Who is Sheikh Ali? No, no, no. She said the pole. <laughs> that's a good one, I just didn't see. It's true too, that's a good one. But that's not what I was talking about, the pole. Come on, who's Sheikh Ali?
I'm telling you the key to success is love. You know them, you love them, you emulate them, inshallah, you will become. The father of Faqih al Muqaddam, that's true too, but that's not the Ali we're talking about. <laughs> I see the names are getting into. Come on. La ilaha illallah. He's the uncle of Sheikh Abu Bakr. So figure it out. Who is Sheikh Ali here on the top of page 84? So they said his uncle, Sheikh Ali. So we're reading about Abu Bakr al-Adani. We already read his biography. Yes, son of Abu Bakr as sikran right. He's the brother of who? Since he's Abu Bakr's uncle, and his grandfather's name is Abu Bakr. What's his father's name? He's the grandson of a Sakaf, right? The brother of Al Aydarus. Good. Haja Stacy's on fire. MashaAllah. So Sheikh Ali ibn Abi Bakr as Sukran ibn Abdurrahman as Sakaf. He's the nephew of Sheikh Umar al Mihdar and the son of Sheikh Abi Bakr Sakran and the brother of Abdullah al Aydarus al Akbar and the uncle of Sheikh Abu Bakr bin Abdullah al Aydarus al Adani. All of them are Poles. MashaAllah, right? So his uncle was a Pole, his father was a Pole, right? And the father, his grandfather was a Pole, his great uncle, uncle was a Pole. His great grandfather was a Pole, all of them. MashaAllah. And you know, we say Al Qutb was the Wali of the time. Doesn't that make you happy just talking like that? No? Does it? Doesn't that give you a feeling? Yes, his mother was a pole right now. <laughs> they were great awliya. But they were all great awliya. He said his mother was a pole. She was among the great awliya, yes. But we don't say she was a pole. This is, as we know, the station of Rijal. Mm. Okay, good. When you have that, remember we talked about Imam Junaid when he said, At-Tasdiq bi'ilmina hadha wilaya, being convinced and certain and sure and having a strong belief in this knowledge of ours is wilaya. When you talk about them like that, you feel that connection, you're not going to outstrip them in your love. This is a secret, put this up. I wanna share this with you. 
In terms of the people of Allah, the awliya of Allah, al-arifun, you will never outstrip them in love. Put that up. The awliya, the arifun, the knowers of Allah, you will never outstrip them in love. So what do I mean by that? If you love them enough, sincere, true love, spiritual assistance will come to you from them out of their love for you. It's tried, tested, and battle proven, as we say. So have that good look towards them. I know in our environment, these things are not talked about much, but really they're the key to success. Love. Loving the people of Allah. Subhanallah, it is so powerful. So that's why you get to know them. You mention them as if they're right in front of you. That's all of the people in this book. You need to have such strong love for their piety, for their closeness to Allah, for their realization of Allah Ta'ala, for their application of the religion inwardly and outwardly, for their preservation of these, the Islamic sciences, for all of that, for their worship of Allah, you love them, right? And when you love them like that, it is as if they are right with you all the time. And that's how all those names and things, they'll become a part of you. When you have trouble memorizing names, realize you are missing the love part and build that up. So that's why you learn about them because you love the people of piety, right? Just the mere mentioning of their stories or their names brings tranquility and comfort and relaxation and joy and intimacy to the heart just by mentioning them. And I'm telling you, when you have that love, the doors of connection are just going to fling open. And all of it is proportionate to your love. So love them. And you'll find all of this will become facilitated for you. And Allah knows best. But trust me, it works. Go ahead. Not because I so say so. The Prophet وسلم, said so. Allah said so. Love is going to come back. Say, if you truly love Allah, follow me. Allah is going to love you. And Allah's love towards you is much greater, far greater than your love towards him. And the prophet's love towards you is far greater than your love towards him. And the awliya's love towards you will be far greater than your love towards them. Because they actually know how to love. They are masters of love. Mm. Go ahead. 
I bear witness that you are a pole, son of a pole, and that you will set to an Aden and die there. On his way back from Mecca, as he was in Aden, a so famous he saint. He said, I bear witness that you are a Qutb. Sheikh Abu Bakr al adni the son of a Qutb, which was my brother, Sheikh Abdullah al Aydrus al Akbar. Right? The son of a Qutb, Sheikh Abu Bakr al Sakran. The son of a Qutb, Sheikh Abdul Rahman al Saqaf. La ilaha illallah. Naam. As he was in Aden, a famous saint died in Ta'is, and the people of Aden came to him to offer their condolences. Then they visited him again and again, insisting that he remain with them. Finally, he acceded to their wish and agreed to stay. This was 889 AH, 1484 CE. He stayed in Aden till his death in 914 AH, 1508 CE. He was visited by scholars of hadith, of theology, jurisprudence, and all other sciences. To so you guys, hadith scholars, scholars of kalam, scholars of fiqh, and all the other scholars, because those scholars are under the authority of the spiritual pole of the time for his barakah, for his blessing. Mm. To each, he spoke of the subtleties of his own science quoting from reference works as if he had them all in memory. Once when Sheikh Muhammad ibn Ali Bajarfil, Rahimullah, a great scholar and knower by Allah Ta'ala from the Da'an Valley, came to Sheikh Ali ibn Abu Bakr al-Saqran, Rahimullah, asking him to say to him, Muhammad Bajarfil, Rahimullah, is one of us, the people of the house. As the messenger of Allah Ta'ala, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, may Allah Ta'ala's blessings and peace be upon him, had said to Salman the Persian, Salman is one of us, the people of the house. <coughs> he answered, Meaning this, through his piety, he reached the blessing of the rank of being accounted among the family of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And some of the definitions for the family of the Prophet, the Al of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is Kullu Mu'min Taqi. Every pious believer. Mm. So be pious. Through your piety, you can be counted among the family of the Prophet Sallallahu mm. He answered, this is something that can only be said by he who is in the degree of standing in for the messenger of Allah Ta'ala Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. May Allah Ta'ala's blessings and peace be upon him. Go to my nephew, Sheikh Abu Bakr ibn Abdullah al Aidarus. Rahimahullah. Then he delegated someone to accompany Sheikh ba, Sheikh ba Jarfil, Rahimahullah, to recommend him to his nephew, who, when he heard the recommendation, said, Muhammad ba Jarfil, Rahimahullah, is one of us, the people of the house. Some people, however, were perplexed by the large debts he incurred to satisfy the needs of his rural hospitality. These debts had reached at one stage a total of 200,000 dinars, which, as everyone well knew, were way beyond what he could ever hope to settle. When he heard someone once remark on this, he answered, Do not come between me and my Lord. I have spent none of that save for his good pleasure, and he has promised me that I shall not leave this world without my debt having been settled. Allahu Akbar. The governor of Aden believed strongly in the sheikh, for once when he had lost his sultan's favor... So when he says believe strongly in the sheikh is what I'm talking about. He had a true conviction in his wilaya, in his status of sanctity and piety. Mm. So that's just etiquette. He has that conviction. This is among the awliya of Allah. Mm. For once when he had lost his sultan's favor and was about to be dismissed from office, he was restored to his seat by the sheikh's miraculous intervention. Shortly before the sheikh died, this governor sent criers throughout the city to every street and alley announcing that the debts of the sheikh were to be settled by him and inviting the creditors to come forward to collect their dues. This it was, thus it was by that time the sheikh passed away, excuse me, thus it was that by that by the time the sheikh passed away, all of his debts had been settled. Well, Finally, a noble thing if you have people who you know who are in debt, and you have the ability to relieve and take care of that debt, there's a great reward in that. Fulfilling the debts of those who have debts that they cannot pay off, especially if those debts were acquired in the service of the dean.
some people, they work so hard in the religion, they go in debt to, to spread the religion. Serving students, serving causes of da'wah, assisting the masjids, assisting the schools. Right? Uh, till they go in debt. So the one who can relieve that person of that debt has a great reward with Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Mm. Because they're going to get the reward of the work that that person did. Mm. Finally, it remains to be said that, as with most great saints, Sheikh Abu Bakr, rahimahullah, had to be forced by providence into the role of illustrious leadership that he assumed. For he who truly knows Allah Ta'ala has no other wish than to remain in secluded intimacy with him, away from the world. It is only by divine coercion that he assumes a role that allows other Muslims to benefit from him. Al-Adani, rahimahullah, once declared that when people kissed his hand, it was... Who's Al-Adani? Who is Al-Adani mentioned here? Who is Al-Adani mentioned here? Mm? I'm waiting for an answer, being a little patient. Abu Bakr al-Adani. Sheikh Abu Bakr al-Adani. Mm. Good. Okay, good. I, I do I, I do that to make sure we're following. Because sometimes, sometimes we read, and because the names are changing and similar, you might not be following. So I want to make sure we're following. So it's the one we're reading about. Abu Abu Bakr bin Abdullah Al Adani Al Aydarus Al Adani. Mm. Okay, go ahead. Al Adani, Rahimahullah, once declared that when people kissed his hand, it was equivalent in his eyes to slapping him on the face, while to kiss his feet was very was very much worse. He went on to say that he never had any desire for fame, but was forced into it for the benefit of others. In Rabi Al Thani of 1415 AH, September 1994 CE, the mausoleum, the mausoleum of Sheikh Abu Bakr al aidarus rahimahullah, was attacked by hundreds of Wahhabis armed not only with shovels and pickaxes, but with automatic assault weapons, rocket-propelled grenades, and explosives. Read that again. Listen. I want to share something with you. Because some people, when they hear my feeling of the Wahhabis, they think because there are so many Wahhabis around us, they be like, why is he like that? Because I know these type of things all over the Islamic world. I know the fitna that they caused wherever they went, right? I know their danger if they're ever getting power. I know it firsthand. Read that again. In Rabi Athani of 1415 AH, September 1994 CE, the mausoleum of Sheikh Abu Bakr al Aidarus, Rahimahullah. That is where he's buried, the maqam, where he's buried at was attacked by hundreds of Wahhabis, armed not only with shovels and pickaxes, but with automatic assault weapons, rock, rocket-propelled grenades, and explosives. They systematically destroyed everything in the building, burned everything wooden, including the 500-year-old carved wooden doors, as well as all the books in the mosque, including the Quran. You know why? They considered that all of the people there were mushrikun. 
and that the grave of Sheikh Abu Bakr al-Adani was an idol. And so whenever they got their power and ability, they destroyed. To the point that one of those people among them, he said, our da'wa of Tawheed will never be complete until we get that idol out of the Prophet's mosque. A'udhu Billah. You know what they mean by that idol? The Prophet's grave. La hawla wa la quwata illa Our da'wah, which they call Tawheed, and I'm not going to go how I really feel about that da'wah, they said it would not be complete until that idol is removed from the mosque of the Prophet What kind of ugly, horrific thoughts are this, is that? La hawla wa la And if they ever had the ability, they would remove it. They would destroy it. Alhamdulillah, Allah protect the sanctity of the Prophet وسلم, alive and after his death. But they did it to Imam al nawis grave. They did it to the grave of Ahmad Zarouk. May Allah protect us from their evil. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Um, Insha'Allah Ta'ala, tonight we will continue with the Black Imams Roundtable. You know, tonight's subject, what is that? Hold on one second. It's a weird one tonight. Hold on. This is more community. Uh, issues and concerns. Uh, Allah, 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 Ya Rab. So the subject matter tonight, when leaders are not so polite, abuses and violations from leaders and how to deal with them. And what this is based upon, there's a, from the Imam of the Bumba, there's a little play with words. When he said, when leaders are not so polite, uh, one individual who was uh, in the so-called black conscious community uh, took a plea agreement for charges of uh, inappropriate behavior with a minor. Uh, and he was sentenced to seven years in prison, but he was one of the popular, popular uh, so-called black conscious uh, leaders and really horrific things that was mentioned So how to, you know, that, that's going to be discussion. This is not my discussion. So I'm going to be kind of uh, playing back up as Imam of the Boom Bap, Imam Fahim and Imam Naeem, who are really more familiar with the person than I am. Uh, but I don't think it's about necessarily the person. I think it's the subject matter. 
that's more important. Uh, but I am familiar with this because I came up in a community that he came from. So I'm familiar with the behavior. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I've never followed him personally. Uh, I grew up in a cult, so I know what cult stuff looks like. So I'm like, yeah, so I don't pay much attention. But nevertheless, it it is uh, it is um, something that definitely we need to talk because listen, that's not just in the conscious community. Unfortunately, sometimes in the Islamic communities, we have these same issues. And so we're going to talk about it, inshallah. You know. May Allah make it easy for all of us, inshallah. So we'll see you tonight at 6 o'clock. But can I give you a quick solution to all this stuff, really? Learn your deen well. You want a solution to all these problems? Learn your religion well. Very well. At minimum, At minimum, know what is obligatory and what is unlawful. What is obligatory and what is unlawful. Right? At minimum, fulfill your obligations, refrain from the prohibitions. If you know that much, that's a protection. And, 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 and that's why learning has to go beyond entertainment, right? Because some things you have to know, right? And it's a protection. One time, a person said something to me. I want to share this quickly, very brief. <clears throat> we shared the same shake in our learning process. But this person claimed basically to be the representative of the shake. So he said something to me as if it was a religious command. I said, no, that don't fly. <laughs> I said, that don't fly. That's not true. And he said to me, this was the position of the sheikh. I said, I don't believe that, but even if it was, that's wrong. And I told him why. Religiously, why? And I showed him in the Islamic text why that's wrong. He said to me, you're going against the sheikh. I said, no, I'm not. I'm going with the sacred law. I'm not going against the sheikh. I'm going with the sacred law. And that's wrong. And 
And as he was insisting on this point, because I didn't hear that from the Sheikh, you said that. I don't even believe the Sheikh said it, but never, nevertheless, even if he did, that's wrong. By what we know from the Sheikh is follow the sacred law. And this issue is extremely clear in the sacred law. And I turned to him, I said, do you know that over our heads is the sacred law? And anyone, it's only opinion, their opinion is going to be accepted when it coincides with the sacred law. That's the governing factor for us. No one is outside the sacred law. No one. And even if there is some excuse, valid excuse, while someone did something that apparently seems outside the sacred law, that's specific for them, but we have to stick to the sacred law. Maybe they reached this level of spirituality where they were not morally responsible and this occurred. That's their issue. The sacred law is our issue. It's very important to understand that. Very important. So, so important to understand that. It's a safety net for misguidance. Learn the sacred law, the Sharia of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's been established from his time to the great Imams and continually conveyed. We don't have to figure this stuff out. It's already laid out. There's always new issues that we may need help with but the general body of the sacred law is established and firm. You just have to learn it, right? And it's codified and systematized and organized. Plenty of books, plenty of scholars, globally, historically. No one can play with this religion. No one can play with this religion when you know it. You follow what I mean? Is, is this point clear? May Allah grant us Abundant knowledge of the sacred law. Okay, let me give it a go. Is there a book on the sacred law? Yeah, the books I gave you. <laughs> Mashallah. There are more. We're going to learn. Inshallah, the uh there are more things coming. I mean, we don't have the time to do everything, and nor can we do everything, but stick stick at it. You'll learn more and more and more. We have a lifetime to go. My intention, I hope it is your intention, to do this till I die. And may Allah give us a long life in obedience. I don't plan on doing anything else, at least in my mind. So we're just going to go from book to 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 book till we die. I don't have anything else in my life I think that I would want to do.
other than what we're doing. I'm just trying to figure out how to do more, right? So we'll get it, inshallah. We'll get it. I'm committed. And long as you commit it, together we can get it done, right? Doors are opening every day, every day. Good question. I I'm working on it. Uh, so let me tell you the process of this piece. So I don't mind you reminding me, so do remind me, but it's gonna take me a second. Because the process of that is number one, we did books that we no longer have and are not even available anymore, right? So I want to prioritize what we have because I know the next thing, when people learn the books, they want to get them and we might not have them. So I have to go first and see all the books we have, right? Uh, then I have to do a count of those books <laughs> to make sure we have enough. Uh, and then put them in a priority of what you should get first. You follow? So it's a process. Good one, Muti, you've been listening. So I'm working on it, but I wanna put what is priority first. And then I have to find, I think y'all observed that the books we teach are not readily available just anywhere. Because there's Sunni books. Unfortunately, what is available easily is a bunch of Wahhabi books. And we don't teach Wahhabi books. So <laughs> that sometimes is problematic. But inshallah, I'm working on it. So please keep reminding me so that at least every day I do a little bit. I already started, but um it take it's gonna take me, it's gonna take me a little bit. But uh, inshallah, it's on my mind and I'm working on it. No, we have a lot of work to do in this area. First, we got to get you being proud Sunnis. That's one step. Stop being intimidated by the people of misguided understandings of the religion, even if they're numerous. I mean, because it's obvious when you learn that that stuff doesn't make much sense. But if, you know, so once you learn, then is the step to have courage to convey the truth and to stand on the truth. And that's why learning all these biographies and learning about scholars globally and historically, it gives you confidence because you realize you're not alone. Because if you're in an environment where you're surrounded by people that have unorthodox understandings of the religion, and even if it's commonplace and you don't know, you may get intimidated. Right? And, and the reason is because of your lack of knowledge. It's not that they are really intimidating because actually it, <laughs> they stole our stuff and recast it into their form. When you really realize everything they got, they stole from us and recast it into their own form. They don't have scholars, they don't have books. They don't have chains of narration. What they did is took our stuff took what they liked, threw out what they didn't like, reshaped it, and used their oil money to give it to us. <laughs> That's reality. So when you know that, you realize, this is my property. What are you talking about? This is this is the property of Ahlul Sunnati Wal Jama'ah. How you gonna sell me my own goods in a corrupt form? So let me give you an analogy. I come in your house, I steal all your belongings, I 
Then cut out the tags, put my own tag in your belongings, make a few alterations, and then sell your belongings back to you. How many of you would accept? I'd break in your house, steal all your belongings, take the tags off and the labels, relabel them, make a few alterations, and then sell them back to you. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they do. So when you realize that, but this is our stuff. What are you talking about? You can't sell me my own goods. May Allah make it easy. All right. May Allah reward you all. Inshallah ta'ala. We will see you tonight on the Black Imams Roundtable. Jahid to Shahid. Struggle, inshallah, and you will witness. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.